So now I'm going to read the table, and then I'm going to look at the question. I'm finally going to answer once I put my ta table together. There's me to range the slopes from smallest to largest. So this is where, like I said, our comparison, if I may say a slope of 2, you may say a slope of 3. Is that a reasonable approximation? Yes. If, I, if the slope is actually about 2 and you tell me negative 2, that's clearly not a reasonable approximation or a slope of 0. All right, but overall, when you talk about this, let's take a look at the slope of um, at negative eight. So the slope of my t is like negative eight. So let's see, here's negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's negative eight on my x-axis. So again, if you want to take a pencil, if you want to take a pen, again, find the point on your graph at x equals negative eight, which is right here, and then sketch a very small tangent line at that particular point. Next one they're going to have me do is at x equals negative 5. So there's the point of my graph at negative 5. And again, if I sketch a very small tangent line at that particular point, look at that. x equals negative 3. There's negative 1, there's negative 3. What happens at negative 3? Up. So it's going to be a horizontal tangent line, correct? So now, so everybody agrees with me at x equals negative 3. What's the slope of my tangent line going to be at x equals negative 3? Zero. Zero. See, we're not arguing about that, are we? Now, let's take a look at these. Uh, this is where I said you want to make a comparison. Draw a couple small t uh, horizontal tangent lines. What can you tell me about those slopes? Are they positive or negative at x equals negative 8 and x equals negative 5? Positive. positive. Now, so now look at the steepness. Which slope is steeper at x equals negative 8 or x equals negative 5? Negative 5. So no matter what slope you say, you've already, we've all agreed that at x equals negative 3, the slope is 0. You're all agreeing with me that the steeper slope is occurring where at x equals what? Negative 5. So when we do, so kind of going back to what I drew on the board, when you write down the slope at x equals negative 5, it should be a larger number than at x equals negative 8. Does everybody agree with that statement? So that's what I mean by I say a comparison. So when I look at your answers to problems like this, I should be seeing, okay, well, your slope at x equals negative 5 should be a larger number than at x equals negative 8, which we all agreed upon. So now let's talk about a reasonable estimation at x equals negative 5. What do you think approximately the slope of this tangent line is going to be at x equals negative 5? Notice, are they all reasonable? Are they all reasonable approximations? One, you're saying one third, somebody's saying two thirds, somebody's saying, somebody's saying a half. Are they reasonable approximations? They're all within the ballpark, aren't they? But when you write that down, what's going to happen at negative 8? That better be what kind of number? It better be smaller. All right, so if you want to say a half at negative 5, I'm okay with that. So what would be a reasonable approximation x equals negative 8? One third, one fourth. I simply stick with, I usually typically stick with like halves or um, fourths. Okay? Does everybody agree with that so far? So any questions on that? Because eventually what I'm doing, I'm not, the question's really not going to be asking me about what are these exact values. I'm going to ask you to be arranging these slopes from smallest to largest. All right? So now let's move on. So at x equals 0 find the point at x equals 0, and I'm going to draw a small tangent line. What can you tell me about the slope of this tangent line? Is it positive or negative? It's negative. It's negative. Um, now let's do it at x equals 1. Um, let's do it at x equals 2. Exist. So now let's talk about 
these three tangent lines I drew at x equals 0, x equals 1, x equals 2. Do you agree with me that all those slopes are negative? All those slopes are negative, correct? So now tell me, out of those three tangent lines, which slope is going to be the steepest at 0, 1, or 2? 2. See, all of us agree with that. All of us agree that the steepest slope is occurring at x equals 2, correct? So what that means, I know my number had better be less than negative 1. In other words, remember when I talk about a number being less than negative 1, it's going to be an integer. All right? Um, so what do you think a reasonable approximation is going to be for the slope at x equals 2? It's going to be approximately what? Negative 3. Negative 3. I would say about negative 3. Mm -hmm. Negative 9 would be... It could be infinity. It could be a negative million. You could have a negative one million slope. Would it be very hard to draw accurately? Yes. But again, remember, it could be negative one million. Could a, could a line have a slope of negative one million? It could. It's going to be very, very close to being vertical, isn't it, if you do that? All right. So we're going to say negative three. Again, a reasonable approximation. Um, so then after that x equals two, out of the tangent line at x equals 0 and x equals 1, which would be the next steepest? At x equals 1, do you agree with me? At x equals 1, x equals 1's tangent line slope is a little bit steeper than the one at x equals 0, correct? So I better have a number that is uh, less than negative 3. So what would be another one? Negative 2. And then if you want to make the one at x equals 1, you can, I mean x equals 0, you can make that what? Negative 1. So again, reasonable approximations, you may have said negative 2, you may have said negative 1, you may have said negative 1 half. But again, all of us agree that the steepest slope was occurring at x equals 2 when we were comparing those three. And then we agreed that it was happening at 1, then we agreed it happened at 0. All right, we agree with that? So now let's move on. Let's go on to x equals 4. So here's the point of my graph at x equals 4. Again, I'm going to sketch my tangent line at x equals 4. And then I've got x equals 7. Are those slopes positive or negative? Positive. So you've already written down some slopes of tangent lines that are already positive, correct? Down at negative 8, negative 5. So now let's look at x equals 4 for a minute. And comparison to the slope of the tangent lines we already talked about that are positive. Is x equals 4 slope steeper than the other positive slope? Yeah, so you all agree with me that. So what's going to happen when I estimate the slope of my tangent line at x equals 4? That better be a number larger than 1 half and 1 fourth, shouldn't it? Because it's steeper. So what would be a reasonable approximation for the slope at x equals 4? 2. Notice that a lot of us yelled out 2. Would 1 have been a reasonable approximation? Sure. All right? But as long as it's bigger than 1 half and 1 fourth. Now let's take a look at what's happening at x equals 7. So at x equals 7, compared to what's... We all agree that it's not as steep as 4, correct? We all agree with that, clearly. But is it flatter than what's happening at negative 8 and negative 5? Yeah, so again, what would... So you better tell me a number that's less than 1 half and 1 fourth. So what number would be less than 1 fourth? 1 third. Or you could have said 1 third, you could have said 1 sixth, something like that. But we all agree that, again, remember, at negative 3, this is 0. But well, we all can see that this tangent line is much flatter than the other two. All right, so any questions? I guess what I mean by reasonable approximation. Yes, Charlie? It's always above. It's always above. Yeah. It's just like, just right now. Eventually it will intersect, but again, when we're talking about the tangent line, it's just intersecting at that one point. Okay? So now the question is asking to arrange the slopes from smallest to largest, all right? So which x value had the smallest slope? Yep, that's, small, that's always smaller. The negative numbers are always smaller than positive numbers. So 
So uh, what's your smallest number going to be? At x equals what? Two. What's your next smallest? X equals one. And then x equals zero. So now we're going to go to the positive numbers. So where's the next, where's the first positive slope going to be at? At x equals what? X equals seven. And then where's the next one going to be? X equals negative eight. And then what? X equals what? So no matter what we estimated, the slope of my tangent line to be, this order would be the same. And most of us agree to that. Most of us, when I asked the question where the steep slope was, most of you were able to tell me exactly where it was. That's why I said the reason, because that's really what you want to get out of it. Not, don't get hung up. Oh my gosh, you said negative one fifth, I said negative one fourth. Again, a reasonable approximation. All right, that's what you want to focus on, the reasonable approximation. That's where some of you are going to get hung up. All right, because you want things to be exact. All right? Yes, Jake? Where do you want it to be raised by that? Um, so now here's another. Now we did an example last Tuesday involving instantaneous velocity and average velocity. But there's a lot of other applications besides just velocity. And this is one dealing with growth rate over some years. Um, so we're dealing with height in centimeters and age from an individual birth to age 20. What is the average growth rate from age 5 to age 10? So average growth rate, just like you had to do, we did in class the other day, we talked about average velocity. When we talk about average velocity, we're talking about the slope of the secant line. So what do you have to know about, to in order to calculate the slope of line, you have to know two points. So we're talking about age 5 to age 10. So treat your age just like you would your x values. You have one point, so again, you're doing the slope. From five to something, we're gonna talk about the y value in a minute, to age 10. So we're gonna use the, these two ordered pairs. Again, treat the five and the 10 as you would the x values. So now looking on your graph, you have to find the y values for each of these corresponding x values. At age five, there's my point. So we're going to approximate that y value the best we can. So what does it appear this y value is going to be? Maybe 10, yeah, because it's ten. So now at 10, yeah, yeah. At age 10, it's going to be what? So now that I know my two ordered pairs, I'm going to calculate the slope between those two points. So again, I know the rate of change is going to be 140 minus 110, the change in y over change in x, um, divided by 10 minus 5. So what is your average growth rate going to be from age 5 to age 10? 6. Now what's my units going to be? Centimeters per Because your height's given in centimeters, your gauge is given in years. So your average growth rate is about six centimeters per year from age five to age ten. Alright, so any questions on for this person, everybody grows at a different rate. Alright, for, for this person. Um, when is the growth rate the greatest? So in terms of my picture, how am I going to answer this question? What am I going to be looking for? I'm looking to see when what's happening. The steepest what? Slope. So again, we just did a sketch. I just did a breadth tangent line. Where does it appear that the slope of your tangent line will be the greatest? Somewhere right in here. You see, most of you agree with that, correct? So again, at approximately age what? It's about 12 to 13 years old. So about 12 to 13. Which makes sense to you teenagers because major growth growth spurts in teenagers. Alright? So everybody agree with me that somewhere around age 12 to 13, the slope of your tangent line will be the largest. Okay? Estimate the growth rate at age five. So again, there's that word estimate again. So they want me to estimate the growth rate at age five. What am I going to estimate? I'm going to estimate the what? Slope of what? 
slope of the what? Tangent line. At x equals 5. So at x equals 5, I already have my point. What appears to be a reasonable approximation of the slope of this tangent line? What do you think? I mean, if you want to extend out the tangent line and then actually estimate a point here and a point here, you can do that if you really wanted to. Um, and yeah, the tricky part about this is because the units are not counting by one, you're counting by units of 50. So that makes this one a little bit more challenging to do. But you could use um, a point here, let's say, at 5, 1, 10. get a better approximation and then maybe choose this point right here at 0, 0.75 if you wanted to estimate the slope a little bit better. All right, so if you want to extend out that tangent line a little bit longer and then use um, two points to actually calculate the slope you put. All right, um, so what would be a probably a reasonable approximation for the slope of this tangent line? Probably about what? 9 to 10, I would say, 9 to 10 centimeters. So 9 to 10 centimeters is probably your average slope rate, the value of 5. Approximately at what age between 20, 10 and 20 is the growth rate the greatest? We kind of already answered that, didn't we? Because we already looked at the whole graph. And where did it turn out that the growth rate was the greatest? And approximately what? About what? about 12 to 13 years, correct? We already answered that in part B. Estimate the growth rate at this particular age. Is the growth rate larger than what it was at age 5? Yes. So again, what would be a reasonable approximation then for the growth rate at age 12 to 13 years old? Probably what? 15, about 15. Again, when I give you a problem like this on a test, don't worry about it. Your, yours will be counted with, with one, two, three, four, five. All right, we're going to come back and do part B because we're going to talk about that um, a lot more today. All right, so any questions? So this should basically help you be able to do the graphs that you talked about that were in the first part of the homework, uh, the 2.1 homework of the graphs. Yes, Anna. Yeah. 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 Um, again, you can do the 110 minus 75 to see your slope point. 110 uh, minus 75 over 5. Okay. Yep. Yep, seven. Seven is fine. It's close enough. Yep. All right. Um, so we're going to come back to part eight. So let's talk now about the um, next lesson, which we, the first part is really a review. And I mentioned this word the other day, derivative. Uh, when we talk about this f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, by itself it's called the difference quotient. We used this definition the other day. Well, we are trying to find the slope of the tangent lines. This is what we call the derivative, and I used this word before. So this is the formula we can use to calculate the derivative of any function. This notation right here, f prime of x, is just your notation that means derivative. And it's read as f prime of x. And that's just the derivative. That's what that apostrophe, f apostrophe of x means. And we read it as f prime of x. We'll get a lot more into the domain of the derivative. But again, when we're talking about the domain, we're looking at slope of tangent lines. What are the slope of all the tangent lines on that particular graph? The process of finding the derivative and what you had practiced doing last night for homework when you were trying to find the slope of the tangent line is called differentiation. Differentiation is just the process, the math that you're doing to calculate the derivative. We call that differentiation. So use the definition to find f prime of x. So what they want you to do is they want you to find the derivative. Remember, what the derivative is, it's the slope of a tangent line. Don't forget, that's all derivative is. It's a rate of change. All right? 
in relationship to what you did last night to homework, talking about instantaneous velocity, you're talking about um, slope of tangent lines. And then I gave you another illustration graphically how you can look at it in another sense, growth rates. All right? So now remember what you had to do last class. We identified f of x. f of x is the function that they're giving you, 1 over x. You have to find your f of x plus h. So how do you find, remember we did the smiley face and all that silly scenario the other day. How do you find f of x plus h? What are you going to do? How do you find f of x plus h? You take out the x and you do what with it? Replace it with a what? x plus h. Because that's the first thing you want to do before you substitute it into your formula. So f prime of x then is going to be equal to the limit as h approaches 0. So now take out the f of x plus h in the formula and replace it with 1 over x plus h. Minus. Take out your f of x, replace it with the 1 over x. All over h. Now remember, doing limits, we try and plug 0 in for h. However, what happens is at this point, we try and plug 0 in for h. We end up with what? 0 over 0. So now we're going to leave the lovely world of calculus, and we're going to enter the lovely world of algebra. How, what are we going to do algebraically to simplify this? We're going to multiply by what? Least common denominator, correct? And what is your least common denominator? x plus h times x. Remember, everything gets multiplied by x plus h times x, even the denominator, because you've got to keep the fraction equivalent. So then the limit, as h approaches 0, what happens when you multiply 1 over x plus h times the LCD? What's going to cross that? You're going to cross out the 1. x plus h is the one we're going to be left with. x. Minus. 1 over x times the LCD, the x's are going to cancel. Make sure you leave parentheses around that x plus h because it's following the subtraction sign. All over h times x plus h times x. So now let's clean this up. What happens when I distribute the negative sign in the numerator? I mean, what am I going to be left with in the numerator when I distribute the negative sign? I'm left with a what? Not just a positive h, but a what? negative h. The x minus x will cancel. What else now can you do to simplify this fraction? You can just cancel out the what? What can you cross out with the numerator and denominator? You can cross out the what? h. So I'm left with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 over x plus h times x. So all I did was an algebra. Um, Simplify the complex fraction, reduce the fraction. Now I'm going to enter the lovely world of calculus. Now the calculus comes back in. Try and find the limit. What do I plug in for h? I plug in a what? Zero. So I'm going to be left with what? Negative 1 over what? x squared. So there's your derivative. There's your f prime of x. So any questions on how I found f prime of x? Now, it not only wanted me to find f prime of x, it then wants me to find f prime of 2. Well, is 2 an x value or is that a y value? x. So what does it want me to do? It wants me to find the derivative when x equals 2. Well, I know my derivative, so what do you think I'm going to do to find my f prime of 2? What am I going to plug into the derivative for x? I'm going to plug in a what? 2. So f prime of 2 is equal to negative 1 over 2 squared, which is negative 1 over 4. And going back and relating it back to what we did last class, what does this tell you graphically at x equals 2? This tells you the what? Slope of the tangent line at x equals 2. Okay? So any questions on how I found the derivative and I get it, I, I evaluate the derivative out of the direct stuff, which is basically what you did last class when we did um, last Tuesday. Now remember, equations of tangent lines. You always have to know two things. You have to know a point, and you have to find a slope. So remember to write the equation of any tangent line, you have to know two things. 
if they don't give you the y value, they have to give you the x value. To find the y value, remember you plug it back into the original function. Then you're going to find your f prime of x, which is your derivative, and then plug in your x value into the derivative. And don't forget your point slope form. Somebody asked me in another class, when they were checking their answers uh, for the homework, the answers were in slope-intercept form. So, again, I will accept either form. If you want to check your answers, you will have to solve these for y to make sure you have the answers correct. But again, um, point slope form is fine. Sometimes you will have them written in slope-intercept form. Sometimes you'll have them in point slope form. All right, so now it's asking me, so use my results from example one to find the equation of tangent line at x equals two. First of all, ask about the equation of a line. What two things do you have to know? You have to know what? You have to know a point, and what else? Slope. Well, we talked about when we found the negative one fourth. What is that in terms of my equation? This is your what? This is my slope. My point has to have an x and a y coordinate. How do you find the y coordinate of the point? What are we going to do? How do you find it? Plug it back in. Do I plug it into the derivative or do I plug it back into my original function? Original function, because we're always referring back to the original graph. So what's the y coordinate going to be when x is equal to 2? What y coordinate will be 1 over what? 2. Now I know my point. Now I know my slope, I can write the equation. So y minus a half is equal to negative one fourth times x minus two. Again, just using some different vocabulary to describe the same um, the same process of what you did the other day. So any questions on that? Let's take a look at example three. Given that f of negative four is equal to two, f prime of negative four is equal to eight, still asking me for the equation of a tangent line. Again, equation of a line, what two things do we have to know? We always have to know what two things to write the equation of any line. We have to know the point and we have to know the slope. That has to change. But now they're not giving us a function. They're not giving us an equation to actually find the derivative for and plug in. They're giving us uh, what looks like ordered pairs. What is this f of negative 4 equals 2? That is what? A point, but this is your point. What's the x value of your point? Your x value of the point is what? Is the x value negative 4 or is the x value 2? Yeah, negative 4. The y value is 2. What is this f prime of negative 4 equals 8? This is the slope of the tangent line at what x value? and x equals negative 4. So my slope is going to be what? What's my slope going to be? Slope will be 8. Now I know my point. Now I know my slope. I can write the equation. So y minus 2 is equal to 8 times x minus negative 4, which is x plus 4. So sometimes they want the, the purpose of this is making sure you recognize notation. Making sure you recognize a point versus the derivative meaning the slope. So that's a notation question. All right, so any questions on whether I give you a function or whether you're given this particular notation? All right. Like I said, in calculus, there's always different representations you have to do. Algebraically, which is what we'll be doing. Now, we have to find the derivative graph of it. So here's the graph of f of x. I want to sketch the graph of f prime of x. Those of you in physics, when you've been sketching velocity and acceleration graphs, you know what I'm talking about You're in physics? This is basically what we're doing. We're going to be sketching velocity graphs, given your position function. All right, the way you do it, the way I like to do it, the easiest way to do it, is find horizontal tangent lines first. Because the horizontal tangent lines will give you your x-intercepts of your derivative. That's the way I always start. So I know I'm just going to plot a whole bunch of points. I have all my different x values. 
And on the graph of the derivative, the y values are going to be coming from the slope of your tangent line. So let's take a look at 4a. Where does it appear you're going to have a horizontal tangent line? At what particular x value? Negative 3. Where else? 2. Where else? 4. And where else? 0. So then, horizontal lines have a slope of what? They have a slope of 0. So what happens, since at negative 3 I have a horizontal tangent line, the slope has to be 0. So then on the graph of the derivative, I know I'm going to have the point negative 3, 0. You also set at x equals 0. You have a horizontal tangent line, so that means that we're going to have a point at 0, 0. At x equals 2, you told me we have a horizontal tangent line, so we have that point 2, 0. And then at x equals 4, we have another horizontal tangent line, which means I'm going to have 4, 0. So that's the way I start. Now, notice my x-axis is divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 regions. So if you look at the graph of the function, notice these turning points is where the graph is changing from increasing to decreasing. Look at what's happening between negative 5 and negative 3. Is my graph increasing or decreasing from negative 5 to negative 3? Increasing. What can you tell me about the slope of my tangent line? Every single one is going to be what? Positive or negative? Positive. So, what does that tell me about the y values on the graph of the derivative? The y values are all going to have to be what? Positive. So now what do you want to do in this interval? Again, these are sketches. Where does it appear the slope of my tangent line is the steepest? Where does it appear it's going to be the steepest? At negative 4. So again, sketch it. What would a reasonable approximation be for the slope of my tangent line at x equals negative 4 going to be? What is a pure reasonable approximation? 2. So at negative 4, 2, I'm going to have to have a point on the graph of the derivative. You all agreed with me that the steepest point was at x equals negative 4. So in your interval, when you sketch the graph of the derivative, there should be no point higher than wherever you place that point at x equals negative 4. Because in this interval, you all told me that that's where the slope is the steepest, which means that number has to be the largest. So when you sketch from negative 5, negative 5 to negative 3, this graph is all going to be above the x-axis. So when your f prime of x is greater than 0, you are above the x-axis. That's where your slopes are positive. Oh, I drove. That's very interesting. Alright. Amazing how I can have four hands. <laughs> 